guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica J if you're new here and to my returning subscribers. Hello, how are you? So it's been super busy over here. We've been doing project after project. Right now we're getting the backyard down. We're getting some more concrete laid and we're also getting a retaining wall for our sloped hill in the back. So we want to look at plants that we can put back there. We also want to do a garden and plant a few fruit trees back there. So we're going to go to the nursery and I thought that I would take you guys along with us. And I also need to look for canisters for my coffee bar. So we're going to go to Target and need to get a memory card. There's a Home Goods nearby. So we're gonna pop into Home Goods, see what they have going on. And then we're gonna go to Michael's because I need paint. I told some of you guys that I wanted to recreate the Sarah Brooke painting, the white and the black, because I could not find it anywhere. So I ended up buying a massive painting that was already framed from Home Goods and decided to just recreate my own. So stay tuned to the end of the video so you guys can see me recreate that Sarah Brooke painting. And it was really easy to do. I feel like a lot of her paintings are very simple, which I love, but it has a lot of detail to, well, not too much detail, but it has some detail to it. So I feel like if you guys really want some of her pieces, but you don't want to drop you know, the $250 that they're usually priced at, or you can't find it, just make your own. And how special is that to hang up your art piece in your home? So I'm gonna show you guys that painting and how I recreated it. Please give this video a thumbs up. It helps my channel out so much. Don't forget to subscribe so you guys don't miss out on any future videos and let's get started. So as I mentioned before, we are redoing our backyard. So we want to go to a nursery to see what kind of plants they had to see you know, what would thrive in our backyard and just get a good idea on the different kind of plants that are out there. Now, I would have never thought to look at a nursery for planters, but you guys, these were actually really nice. I really want some type of flower in our backyard, but I am terrified of bees. So you guys, what should I do? <laughs> I was thinking maybe we can plant something in an area of the backyard where we're not gonna be at because I just, I don't like bugs. <laughs> So on the top of our list is some type of palm tree. Um, we want something that doesn't grow too big, but we really love palm trees. And hello, we live in Southern California. You gotta have a palm tree. And the kids were having a blast at this place. But right here is all of their citrus plants. They have all kinds of plants. They had a mango tree for $42, a really good size one. So we would definitely want to plant some fruit trees. Cara Cara is on the top of our list. If you guys have not tried a Cara Cara orange, you definitely need to. I was actually really surprised to see pompous grass. I, I don't know, I've just never thought that I would see pompous grass at a nursery, but they had all of these. I'm trying to get around this stuff, but all of you who are thinking about growing pompous grass, it's only like $25 for this bunch right here. So I was really thinking about getting a olive tree, but the worker told me that they don't really do well inside the house. And not only that, if you eat the olives off the tree without fermenting it, he was saying that you can get really sick. And I have little ones, so I was looking at the dwarf olive trees because they do not bear any fruit. So I think getting a dwarf olive tree would be a better idea. And he said they grow about four to six feet, which is not a bad size at all. And of course I had to show you guys the birds of paradise. They are just such a beautiful plant and look, they are blooming flowers. Next up is home goods. You guys, my home goods, the music is always blasting. So I cannot just go in there and talk. I have to do voiceovers. They are bringing out Christmas decor left and right. It is flooded with Christmas decor. Now 
Now I've seen this sculpture time and time again, but this is why I don't pick up everything to show you guys the prices because the stuff is heavy. I almost banged it into my knee. I almost dropped it. <laughs> A lot of this stuff is really heavy, but for the love of YouTube and showing you guys the prices, I did it for you. <laughs> Home Goods has been having a lot of cups, a lot of coffee mugs, a lot of cocktail glasses. So if you guys are in need or you want to gift it to someone for the holidays, I think that would make a really awesome gift. They have a lot of very good quality cups as well. So I would check out your Home Goods for that. Oh, it's so hot. I think I found the acrylic paint. Oh, over here. Michael's is where it's at. Let's see. Um, neutral gray five. This is what, oh, this is what I used. I one, get one, all of these. I need white and I need black. Let's get this big thing of it. These feel so soft. You probably get it really smooth painting using those. Let's get white. Make sure it's not full body because that stuff is so hard to work with. Okay, back to voiceover mode because the music was blasting, but I want to stop at the floral section before heading out of Michael's and they had a lot of good stuff. Let me show you guys what my favorites were. I really like these white flowers, these branchy ones right here. I believe Pottery Barn sells a very similar arrangement. I think I might have to pick those up. These branchy stems with the faux snow on them. How beautiful is that? I cannot wait to bring those into my home when I'm ready to start decorating for the winter. And last up is Target. Now I was looking to see what they had, but I really want to look at their canisters because I'm working on my coffee bar. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time finding canisters for my coffee bar, but I feel like a lot of the good ones have really bad reviews. So I need to find something that's beautiful and functional. We can't just go with beauty and aesthetics and it's just basically trash. But these were okay. I think the wood's a little too yellow for me. These pillows are from the Hearth and Hand collection. I think they are absolutely beautiful, but they do not chop. I've been seeing her homebody book on sale for 30% off for a while now. And let me show you guys what's underneath the cover. I actually have this book. I've showed it in my entryway tour, but look how beautiful that cover is. Since the holidays are coming up, I'm thinking about tableware and cups and glasses and everything. So I just want to see what she had in her line. This plate was one of my favorites. I might have to go back and get those. Look at that. And the tapered candlestick holders by Project 62. Yes. They also had a lot of recipe books for 30% off. Now here's the real reason why I came to Target, but we can't just go to Target and skip out on the home decor area i mean who's with me on that so i want to show you guys all these items i've used for this project a lot of this stuff i already had especially these tools over here some of it not so necessary some of it was i'll tell you guys the difference between a few of the um paint brushes that i have and here are the paint colors that we're using and i got these from michael's we're using this color right here in parchment so if you guys can find a smaller tube of this pick up a smaller one you don't need much of this color right here you're also going to need a white i have titanium white and mars black you want a decent size of these two colors and then you are also going to need this color right here it's a neutral gray now for the tools a lot of this stuff i already had so like this paintbrush i already had i use this to paint the walls with and to do some little projects here and there so this will give you a bit of paint stroke especially mine because it's 
pretty, mm, has some dry lip paint on it and all that. This came in a pack. I believe I got it from Michaels or maybe it was Hobby Lobby. This one I just found around the house. It's a very coarse, stiff brush. I use this to kind of make some texture on the painting. Sponge this little gadget right here. So half the painting is black and I wanted it to be the smoothest finish I could get. So I went back to Hobby Lobby and I picked this paintbrush up. It's very soft, so you're gonna get minimal paint strokes with something like this. And then I used a roller, which was pretty unnecessary. You don't need a roller. The paint is too thick for this to really work well. So I would recommend using this or diluting your paint if you want to use a paint roller because this painting was pretty massive so um whatever's easiest for you you're going to need some containers to put your paint in you're going to also be mixing some paints so you want something to mix it in these i got from hobby lobby and you're also going to need some painter's tape so here's what the painting looked like before i started painting over it I did spray paint the frame because it was originally a gray color and I didn't need to tape it off because we're going to paint over that picture anyway so that part didn't really matter. So we're going to start off with this neutral gray color. But before we start painting we want to tape off the frame so we don't get any paint on it. And then I'm going to measure a halfway mark and put some painter's tape a little bit below that mark just because I don't want the painting to be half white, half black. I wanna have more white in the picture than the black. So now I'm gonna paint the perimeter this neutral gray color and start painting the area where I want the white, this gray color right here. Because in her painting, it looks like she has some gray peeking through. Now I'm going to take this small paintbrush and kind of get in there with the gray paint just so you don't see any of that blue or green from the original painting on the inside of the frame. So now I'm going to go in with that white and just paint over that gray. This part of her painting is very distressed, so don't worry about paint strokes or anything like that at this point. Because we taped off half the painting, it gave a little bit of a harsh line, so I just went over it just to soften that line up a bit. So now I'm just distressing the picture around the frame a bit and adding some gray. And I noticed her painting had some pops of gray peeking through. So I kind of just went over just adding some detail gray marks just, you know, all over the place. So now I'm going to use the softer paintbrush and just paint over everything with another coat of white. So now I'm just going over where I painted those pops of gray and trying to distress it a little bit more and have it peeking through. Using this coarse paintbrush made a bigger difference and I just kind of want that gray to peek through a little bit more. So I'm trying to move the white paint around just so that it can peek through. I did go back over and added a few more pops of gray and use a roller brush to smooth everything out and add some more white. I feel like this method really didn't make that big of a difference. It did smooth everything out without adding too much white paint. Now I'm using a sponge to try to get that gray to peek through a bit. I feel like this was the hardest part just to have that gray portion peek through um, just a bit. In Sarah's painting, she has this strip of gray. It is a line, but it's imperfect. So you want it to be jagged. You don't want it to be completely straight. 
So now it's time to paint this section black. Now this area is very smooth in her painting, so you wanna use a very soft paintbrush. I did tape off some of that gray so I didn't paint over it completely, but you guys will notice I did paint over it a little bit too much and I wanted the colors to overlap, so I'm gonna go back over it with that gray um, once the black dries. You guys see, and we don't want it to be a straight line like how you see after I take off the paint or after I take off the painter's tape. So I'm gonna go back in with that gray color and create another line that is imperfect. Next, I'm gonna go in with this tool right here with that parchment color. And the color right from the tube is a little bit too dark, so you wanna mix it with your white. Now I did cover a little bit too much of the gray color. So once I'm done adding this color, I'm gonna go back over it with the gray to add a thicker line. Once this dries, you don't wanna do it before it dries because the colors are just gonna to mix together and it's gonna look a hot mess. And we are done. Now to hang the picture up, I did use these D-ring hooks. I just drilled them in the back of the frame and there she is. Let me know in the comments section on how I did. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.